We've got our post puller for T posts. I'm Chrissy Lambert. I work for USDA Wildlife Services as a non-lethal conflict prevention specialist. And today we are at a ranch picking up turboflagery that we put out in January to protect some lambs and livestock guardian dogs from some nearby wolves passing through. Wolves are cautious critters and this turboflagery, all the flagging on here that you can see blowing in the wind it's a visual stimulus to the wolves that kind of freaks them out because it's unfamiliar to them. They don't understand what it is. And it, we want it to continue having that effect by keeping it up for short periods of time, three months out of the year. If it's up for longer than that, they can eventually learn that it's not so scary and they start to test it and breach it. Candy mixed nuts container <laughs> that I use for all of my... For everything? Yeah, for everything. <laughs> mixed things. We're all about recycling and repurposing here. That's right. <laughs> but all of these little, um, these are little insulators that go on the fiberglass posts that we use to hold the flagery in line. So these little guys, it's just a great container for all those little pieces. Nice. Hi, I'm Eric Calsta. We ranch here on the Big Hole River near Gwen. I also work as the Working Wild Challenge Director for Western Landowners Alliance. We run sheep currently, um, and we've had some issues with wolves. We've had three different attacks in the last year. Um, we lost one dog. We had. Um, multiple dogs beat up on several occasions resulting in a lot of vet bills. Um, we haven't lost any sheep. My wife is uh, responsible for contacting Chrissy and getting this flattery project going. Wildlife Services reached back out to her and said hey we had this tool flattery. Uh, you want to try it? It's not quite three months since it's been out, but we don't want it to stay out for longer than three months so that it can still be an effective tool in keeping wolves away from whatever it is that you're enclosing, which in our case is usually lambs or calves, more vulnerable livestock. This is our agreed upon date with the producer to go ahead and pick it up. So when you have to connect 
two pieces of flattery, like, you know, opposite ends. Um, I just do a, a simple knot. And then the both of the ends of them, since this is poly wire, there's nine small strands of wire in each of them. I peel back the plastic and basically isolate the wire in each of them and then twist them together. And that helps to continue the electric from one poly wire section into the next poly wire section so that even if you have a one and a half mile section of poly wire or um, one and a half mile section of flattery like we have out here, that whole way around, it'll be evenly electrified when you do that. The way we laid out the flattery, one of the main points where we have been seeing the attacks, there was probably a descent marking area there, and this kind of interrupted the path. We're hopeful that some wolves at least came across and had a negative interaction. Uh, we haven't seen any wolves since, I don't know, about two weeks after this was put in. Fladry is one of those tools that has limited effectiveness, I think, because of the time in which you're allowed to use it before the predator becomes acclimatized and the size of an area that you can use it on. I mean, here we have a mile and a half of fladry out, which I think is probably far in excess of its normal effective area. And the maintenance required on a mile and a half of fence is difficult. Um, sheep don't particularly respect fladry, so there, there are challenges. Another tool in the toolbox, you know, they you gotta be able to try them all, right? Some will work for you, some won't. Every single turbo flattery project that I have put up in my time with wildlife services, there's been a lot of collaborative efforts with other agencies, non-governmental agencies and organizations, and the ranchers too. They're able to usually come out and help with it as well. Get some, some of the posts in the ground and string out the flattery, get it electrified, set it all up. We have one and a half miles out here at this site. That's not something that I can feasibly do on my own within a reasonable timeline. So I definitely rely on these folks to, to help me do that. It's definitely a group effort with a common goal. It glides in the snow. It's awesome. I had those tracks last winter, but we didn't get enough snow to warrant putting them on yet. So it was kind of like a quick turnaround. This winter we were getting dumped with snow and I'm like, oh, I better get those on. So they're working awesome now.